Update 23.8 is live on PC, and players can now pick up the Nezha Deluxe skin, as well as experiencing his changes. So as for the Deluxe Collection, you can get the skin by itself for 150 Platinum, or you can purchase the collection as a whole for 225. The collection comes with the skin, the Buzz Howl Sign Dana, and the Tang Dagger skin. Now as for the changes that came with Neja in this update, we have a health increase from 225 to that of 375, however they have decreased the shields from 225 to that of 150. Now when it comes to the Firewalker changes, they're pretty basic. It's changed from a channel based ability, that being it runs off your energy for however long you have energy, to a duration based ability. They've also changed the animation to that of a small hop that won't restrict your movement. You can also continue using Firewalker when you use a Blazing Chakram teleport, so that's an added bonus there. Now as for Blazing Chakram, they've increased the cast animation speed. You also have this new thing called Marking Enemies, where a small little ring will be rotating around an enemy, and if you kill said enemy with another hit, they have a chance to drop energy orbs as well as health orbs. They've also increased the number of targets that the disc can hit before coming back to the player, and they've added a charge mode, where upon charging it, it'll just go straight out and come back to the player, and during that throw, it'll deal extra damage. As for warding Halo, it now has a new HUD icon for that of the ability, showing how much damage you have left before the ability deactivates. And they've also changed the damage reduction from that being 100% to that of 90%, so it's no longer an invulnerability ability. They've also increased the animation speed for the ability, as well as increasing the incoming damage multiplier during the invulnerability phase. Now when the ability ends, that being when the absorbed damage reaches zero, the ability will send off an AoE blast dealing fire damage to any nearby enemies. As for Divine Spears, it's simple, they just sped up the animation casting time, as well as removing the slam every time the ability ends. They've also added a small little bit of synergy, that being when you're hitting a speared enemy with a blazing chakram, it can produce a second chakram that sends off going to other nearby enemies. And there was also sound changes that came to the Warframe as well. Next up were changes to Revenant. Now his enthrall only saw two changes, that being that the pillars that spawn upon the enthralled enemy's deaths will now send out projectiles much like the Phantasma's secondary fire that will head towards the nearest enemy. They've also made it so you can explode the pillars by using Dance Macabre on them. However, I don't understand that synergy since by the time you use Dance Macabre, the enemies are dead, so therefore that bonus is kind of mute. But let me know if I'm wrong in the comments. The next change was that of Mesmer Skin. You can now recast the ability, so that's a really good bonus there. And as for Reeve, they've lowered the energy cost to that of 50. You will become fully immune when using the Reeve ability. And then when you use Reeve on your Thralls while Mesmer Skin is active, it can restore one of the charges as well as using it on teammates will provide them with a protective shield for a short duration. And they've also met it so the cost of Reeve while using Dance Macabre is that of 25 energy. They've also made fixes to that of Revenant's abilities as well, so if you care about Revenant, make sure to have a read of those. Also in this update were changes to Oxium Osprey since they nerfed Galatea on Neptune into the ground. So what they've done is made it so Oxium Osprey spawn within the first five waves or rounds on corpus defense and interception missions, as well as slightly increasing the spawn chance of Oxium Ospreys in all corpus defense interception missions at higher waves and rounds. There were also changes to the dojo as well. There is now a system for clans called a Founding Warlord. This is the highest rank that a player can obtain in a clan, and it means you have power over everyone in the clan. Only one person can have this rank, and if the current Founding Warlord wants to leave the clan, you will have to promote another player to that of Founding Warlord, and then you can piss off and join another clan. They've also made it so you can browse the contributions into the treasury for your dojo, so you can see what resources are currently in there, how much credits you have in there as well, and just know what's in your treasury, what's in your vault for your dojos. Finally, there's the changes. Apparently Rhino now has a HUD buff indicator for his iron skin. However, when I was testing this and using both the standard Rhino as well as Rhino Prime, he didn't have it, so that may be a bug there. 
They've also reduced the requirements for a number of items in game, those being the Mutilus Nav coordinates for the Mutilus Allied V assassination key from 3 to 1. You will now have to have 20 Animo beacons instead of 40 to fight Ambulus. And they've also changed the cost of the Vestan Moss scans required to craft the Sunrise Apothic from 25 to 12. Health conversion also saw a change where it will only remove the stacks upon having impact to your health. They've made it so your operator facial accessory energy colors are tied to that of your overall energy color on your suit. They've increased the Anspartha Brace Recharge from 30 seconds to 45 seconds. They made numerous optimizations. They improved AI pathing in the Corpus Gas City tile set. They removed the ability to unintentionally equip hydraulic crosshairs or sharpened bullets on Mace's regulators. Apparently they did not work on the ability at all. And they also made it so resource descriptions will list where you can find said resources on the star chart. And finally they removed the special Warframe HUDs for Nidus and other Warframes from being displayed while you're in the dojo. As for fixes in this update, as well as the hot fixes that came out as of the time of recording, they are up on your screen, you can read them here, or you can check them all out on the forum post. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully I kept you up to date. See you later.